It's a Gundam! Uh, Super Draco here, and welcome back to It's a Gunpla, the show where I build Gunpla. So today, uh, and I guess uh, Gundam 00 Slander continues as we continue Gundam Virtue, today we're going to be building the legs. So, you know, my last few videos, I was really harsh and negative, and honestly, I'm probably not going to change all that much. So, anyhow, uh, so I was talking about various things, about how the villains were more interesting than the characters. But those, you know, the, the Earth villains, with the exception of Ali al Sashis, they they weren't even the primary villains. Your primary villains in Gundam 00 were the innovators. And in Season 1, they had an excellent build-up to the reveal of uh, Ribbon's Allmark as the true bad guy. So throughout Season 1, you see the Alejandro Corner plotting, doing various things, enacting his own plans. And Ribbons is there acting as his uh, agent, or proxy, whatever you want to call it. And then the betrayal at the end, and the reveal that Ribbons was the real mastermind. And then you know, on his uh, couch in a spacious room that he was going to control the world. It was all so good, and then, and then season two happens, and they just wasted the innovators because the fact that most of them were clones they didn't do much with that especially when uh, Thierry Arde faced off against an innovator clone of himself because big spoiler reveal Thierry is an innovator and always was And then they just did nothing with it other than a really cool fight scene where Tiaria's upgraded CeraV Gundam revealed that it has six arms, each equipped with a beam saber. Which was really cool and a cool throwback to the UC and all the sub arm mobile suits. But other than that, they didn't do anything. They gave so much hype and build up with the Innovator mobile suits, the Gadessa, the G the Gades, the uh, Garazzo, etc. And they were they just declined so fast. But I think season two had a frantic pace compared to season one. And maybe that's part of why, because season one had a whole bunch of episodes that really didn't do much. I mean, like, there was the episode where they went to war with that uh, group, uh, Cataron, or whatever their name is, and then in season two they actually were working together. And other stuff, and then... And I, I harped on this before, but then you had characters like Marine, uh, Marina, I believe her name was? Is, Ishmael or Ismael or something? Yeah, the Peace Princess who literally you could make the entire show take her character out just like uh, Wang Li Mei and nothing would be different. Thankfully, in Season 2, we got significantly less Wang Li Mei and all that. And, and perhaps that's why the plot seemed to zoom by, because they had trimmed out all these non-essential characters. They also trimmed out the excessive fan service. And then... Well, I guess they really didn't, because there was the whole Tiaria and drag thing, but regardless, uh, I'm not hating on that. That actually was a cool scene where he actually 
was dancing with ribbons while ribbons was doing the the villain uh, the villain hero uh, argument about what's right and what's wrong. But I was thinking about it in the last video. I was talking about Soma Paris and how she, or yeah, Paris, and how she joined Celestial Being. And then that reminds me of uh, the whole story because basically, and again, I, you've already had your spoiler warning. So if you're still here watching me, by the way, if you haven't muted me and put your own audio to this, thank you for listening to my nonsense. Now, you also now know how my wife feels being married to me. So, anyhow, so, long story short, she was, uh, Marie Papa, she, and they were, she and, uh, uh, Alleluia were experimenting on together, and I guess they bonded through trauma, and I believe, uh, Alleluia, part of him joining Celestial Being, I think, was to rescue her. But little did he know she had been turned into Soma Paris, who essentially, Soma Paris and Marie Pafashi, they mirror Alleluia and Hallelujah's split personalities. Which all that was fine. For the most part, other than not even a really a passing thought to all the weird relationship building between Alleluia and uh, Sumeragi. Which I get it, there's going to be somebody saying, oh, their relationship was always platonic, blah, blah, blah. And I acknowledge that. What I'm saying is that whole thing was a waste. There was no tension, no nothing. I mean, they put Soma Paris in the cockpit of the gun archer uh, so fast there wasn't even uh, really time to question if she was there for real to help him or not. But at the end of season one, Alleluia and Hallelujah as personalities decided to work together to be the perfect super soldier. They did the classic gag where when their hair is laying one way, it's hallelujah. When it covers the other eye, it's hallelujah. And then they slick their hair back to be the ultimate soldier. And that was really cool. And the sequence was good until uh, he got hit and Debris cut out his one eye and temporarily killed uh, hallelujah as a personality. And I actually think it was a huge waste. Because, I mean, just in my head, I, I'm just curious about, you know, the perfect super soldier being the new dominant personality. You know, Alleluia and Hallelujah essentially being gone, merged together. It just seems like a lost opportunity to have this new character on screen interacting with every everyone and trying to figure out his place now that he basically is kind of got put kind of got shoved out of nowhere basically and then especially when the you know when the, the all the Sergei stuff happened they could have done a lot with that and wasted it And I think that's my biggest problem with Gundam 00. Despite all my other blather, it's that it had the makings of being excellent. And they just didn't take advantage of anything they had going for them. Now, I'm not commenting much on the leg build. Um, it's very similar to the other... Season 1 uh, Gundam, Double O Gundam leg builds, Axia, Dynamis. Uh, well, Dynamis, I reckon, was the most unique of the lot because of his strange knee pad. Because his knee pads held missiles in them, which is 
cool. But given Natalie's whole thing where it's supposed to look and feel naked. But anyhow. Um, so continuing. Uh, Trying to think, um, was that, and I think that just their own lore of the show, I think, just held it down. Was, I haven't even touched on a chunk of the lore, because essentially, the, the meta story of Gundam 00 is this guy, Eolia Schoenberg, or Schoenberg, or Schoenberg, whatever his name is, he devised the solar, the GN, re, the GN uh, reactors, or the solar reactors, the GN uh, engines. And they didn't have the technology to produce them in his time. So somehow he was able to create a supercomputer called VEDA that using the internet somehow guided the world to a state where the where his te his GN technology could be developed. And just on that line of thought alone, I want to know what version of the internet he was on. Because the internet despite being the greatest access to knowledge in human history um it's also just been a huge waste of time and resources i probably could build on how i think the internet is stagnating our intelligence and whatnot but i think that's getting into too deep a discussion and I want to keep ranting about this anime that came out in, like, 2005, I think. But yeah, that's his grand plan. Oh, and he froze himself, Schoenberg froze himself, so when the time was right, he could unfreeze himself. But then... It also turns out that this plan was also part of uh, turning humans into innovators, uh, altering somehow altering the human brain with GN particles till they developed a quantum brainwave that would eventually let them communicate with an alien made out of liquid metal. Because that alien was coming towards Earth and threatened to assimilate everything in its path. And the only hope to save humanity and Earth was to use the twin drive system from the Double O Gundam to somehow quantize the living metal alien so somehow using quantum brain waves that the pilot of that mobile suit could take the alien back to its home world. Oh, my head hurts just thinking about it. How is it a series and movie with such cool designs has such a terrible plot? Of course, uh, with all the other crappy anime I've watched, maybe I don't have much room to question that. So, anyhow... But, yeah, so, all that's the movie. Oh, yeah, and continuing Season 2. In Season 2... Uh, Luis Halvey actually becomes important because originally her hand couldn't be regrown because of uh, exposure to red GN particles. 
but somehow they managed to do it anyway, or they just gave her a bionic one, I don't know, I don't, you know what, let's find out. Because this one's going to bug me. But either way... Either way, the uh, innovators gave her a new hand and she ended up becoming a soldier. Okay, it was a prosthetic. Uh, and then somehow, uh, if I remember right, they get they ended up in her old suit slash mobile armor, that, and somehow using quantum brain waves, they could like over over take her mind and use her as a puppet. And I'm just looking into stuff because I'm trying to see. There was one cool thing where Luis did get revenge on Nana Trinity for firing on her and killing her family. But, I don't know. Uh, and ironically, it soured for me because it was after Nana Trinity killed Wang Li Mei. And, you know, so it ruined the most satisfying moment for that whole waste of time of character. I will say in Season 2, Luis's descent into madness was, uh, was quite good. Oh, I get it. She was a pseudo innovator. So so it was just a reuse of the whole cyber new type story from the Universal Century. Ah oh, god. Ah, uh, you just every time I find out more, it just ends with more with me in pain. Is everything they did cool? I keep I find out they just stole from other anime, other Gundam anime, and whatnot. But so we have the legs are completed now and attached to the crotch. So then the next step is to bring in the torso and complete Nadle. And there's our completed Nadley, so once I get it balanced after the hair falls off, because that stupid hair does not want to stay attached at all. And here's Nadley in its naked glory. As my wife very astutely said, it looks naked. And I've had another random thought about those cables. It's like, wait a minute. Why doesn't it shed... Why aren't the cables built into Virtue's armor and they separate uh, with the armor? But anyhow, thanks for watching. 
We'll do the weapons and start Gundam Virtue next episode. Check me out on Fiction Press. Uh, thanks for watching.